Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the correct views. Sam I be Ganji doing political commentary for the media suites. If I was staring blankly into the camera, it wasn't because I was doing a Bill Clinton. I don't know if you guys saw that. But I wasn't doing a Bill Clinton, uh, nor William Burroughs. I'm actually waiting for the start to hit. Uh, friends, it's Correct Views. we got a show tonight. I have a question, though. I would like to know which direction this show should go in. Um, I, I'll just be straight up. I've been debating remaining a member of the Media Speaks on Saturday and not necessarily keeping this channel active or as active. Um, the reason for that is at this point, I kind of need the share brigade here because I can't promote the show as much as I was um, due to technical glitches and BS where I work. But I'm not one of those people that do shows for clicks. I certainly don't care if you like me or not. However, I didn't do the show, and I don't put this much time into it to get 67 hits. If you guys really like the show and want me to do it, keep doing it. Let me know. But I need you to hit share. I need you to hit subscribe because if it's not going to be watched in accordance to how much time I put into it, then I'm going to stay on the media speaks, but possibly not continue the correct views. Um, for one thing, I need a lot of you to complain to the GOP convention that I was not invited for special pass media privileges. And I say that because I can't bring you the best show if you're not standing up for me when the show gets hosed. Okay, I appreciate you listening and leaving me a comment and saying, I wish you were in the GOP convention. But I need you to send that to Mr. Priebus, the chairman of the GOP, not to me. It doesn't do any good for you to tell me that you wish I was there. And I, I'm going to get into the news. I'm just saying, if you really like the show, let me know, because I'm debating whether or not I'm going to keep doing it. Um, NewYorkTimes.com, since I am doing it, I'm going to do it well. Orlando Gunman was cool and calm after massacre, police say. Now, the issue here, before I get into it, the issue here for me was this. I guess initially everyone thought that this was the work of quote unquote the evil gay hating Christians. The people that were saying this, the social justice warriors, if you will, the people that were saying this were people that were grouping all Christians under the same blanket in a way that they condemned Donald Trump for doing to Muslims. By that I mean, if you, if a Christian, and he hadn't, he didn't, if a Christian had shot up a gay bar, then all Christians would be evil. But now that the man is Muslim, it was one isolated Muslim, and doesn't, of course, represent the Muslim religion as a whole. If that kind of strikes you as anti-Christian for the sole purpose of just being anti-Christian, and that means you have a thinking part of your brain. And I say this because there are a lot of people like me. I watch horror movies. I like heavy metal music. Uh, I like industrial music. Um, consensually, without cheating, my wife and I are really, really naughty. Um, there are a lot of Christians that don't fit into the standard mold of Christianity, of which I would be one of them. But nothing makes people like me unify with Christians more than somebody implying that because we know that Christ rose from the dead, that we're somehow the kind of people that would go shooting up a bar full of innocent gay people. Guess what? That's wrong. That's BS. Okay, you didn't do it when you found out it was a Muslim, but it was perfectly okay to do when you were talking about a Christian, wasn't it? 
Well, listen to this. The Orlando gunman, who was not a Christian, was calm, cool, it was cool and calm after massacre police said. Let me go to screen share. Nothing says the religion of peace like a shooting at the gay bar and blaming Christians. Now, again, I'm not going to blame all Muslims for this. But the problem is there are more deadly Muslims than there are deadly Christians. That's unfortunately true, and I wish it wasn't. Um, the gunman who went on a shooting rampage in a popular gay nightclub here shot nearly all of his victims in the first stages of the assault, then was utterly cool and calm while he talked by phone to law enforcement officials about further carnage, claimed allegiance to the Islamic State, there's your Christian, and praised the Boston Marathon bombers, officials said on Monday. In other words... He was a typical terrorist. As officials offered new details about the worst mass shooting in American history, which left 49 people dead and 53 wounded, Chief John Mina of the Orlando Police Department said that the gunman, Omar Mateen of 29, told police negotiators, falsely they later discovered, that he had explosives and accomplices at the Pulse nightclub. So basically, he was by himself. This is another crime perpetuated by Islamists. Does that mean all Islamists? No, it does not. Most, If you're Islamist and you're listening to the show and you haven't decided that you wanted to shoot me yet, then you're probably somebody I'd like to have a beer with. Thanks for listening and subscribe. Welcome to war. This is why we need to keep track of who we let in the country and where they're from and what their intentions are. Because if we don't, we're going to end up with even more of this. And I personally don't care if the man was a Christian or if he worshipped the mighty mice men that live on the moon made of green cheese. What I do care about is making sure that if we are bringing people into the country, we have some idea who they are and what their intentions are. That is not racist, friends. That's just common sense. That also takes us into our next story, nicely enough here. Um, some Alan Salazar. We're led by a fool. Obama doubles down on calls for Obama to resign. And uh, he says exactly why here. I, I, him resigning, although I do, I will say I think that's a mistake. Him resigning would not be a good thing because if he were to no, resign, yes. oh, I got a short well, sight. There's nothing. Damn sight. If he was to resign, then that would almost make President Obama a martyr. So you wouldn't want to do that. But um, the essence of what he's saying makes sense here. GOP presidential candidate Donald Trump doubled down on calls for President Obama to resign Monday following the commander-in-chief's refusal to utter the words radical Islamic terrorism. Now, what's interesting here is that it is radical Islamic terrorism, which happened after this article was written, that led to the massacre in the gay bar that got blamed on Christians. Christians were told you shouldn't even pray for them because you hate gay people. That's not true. Um, there, there are kind of two, two kinds of Christians here. Either them that really are against the act of homosexuality and are trying to save the sinner, or people like me that are Christian but believe differently in the inter... Like, for instance, I don't believe that David was condemned because he had many lovers. I think he was condemned for stealing somebody's wife and having her put to death. Um, I guess condemns a bad word, but I think that that in the bigger picture is what it was. But my point is, you can paint with a big brush, and sometimes it's too big of a brush. The, the brush they're using for Christians seems to be the one that is more applicable to many aspects, but not all aspects, of Islam. In an appearance on Fox and Friends this morning, the likely Republican nominee elaborated on a tweet he sent yesterday, which asked, is President Obama going to finally mention the words radical Islamic terrorism? If he doesn't, he should immediately resign in disgrace. 
pressed for details on the tweet. Trump said Obama was either incompetent, really smart, or hiding something. He says, look, we're led by a man that is either tough, not smart, or he's got something else in mind, Trump said. And the something else in mind, you know, people can't believe it. People cannot, they cannot believe that President Obama is acting the way he acts. And can't even mention the words radical Islamic terrorism. There's something going on. It's inconceivable. There's something going on on. And he's right. He says we were led by a fool. He said he doesn't get it, and he gets it better than anybody understands, meaning he's either condoning the dreadful things that we are seeing from the radical side of Islam, or he's too stupid to see it. There is no other explanation. And you're not just politically correct when you justify murder or when you ignore murder. You need to call out the murderers by who they are. There are people that would kill me for saying what I'm saying now. Those are the people to whom we are talking about. These are the people that need to be understood and prevented from coming into the country. By dumb luck, this is also Adam Salazar. Health insurers seek 60% price increase, uh, percent rate increase. The Obamacare has been a massive failure in in such a way that it's almost hard to overstate it. I, for instance, have told this story many times on the show, so I'm going to truncate it. As you can see, yes, it's my little finger. Go ahead and laugh. Ha ha, he flipped me the bird. Right here, you will notice that the I, I'm missing like a chunk of my finger. It had to be sewed back on. I don't know if you can see it on this camera. I, it cost about a grand. It was miserable. Um, I was able to pay for it. My insurance covered the rest. I paid about a grand. Um, I got cursed, and I do say cursed, with vertigo. Thankfully, it went away and never came back. I thought I had a stroke. Um, it cost about a grand to find out I had vertigo because they have to roll out all the really scary things, which, thank you, God, I didn't have. Uh, brain tumors, MS, sugar, blah, blah, blah. All of those tests cost, cost a fortune to roll them out. So it cost about a grand for me to find out I had uh, basically something that was going to go away by itself. Point is, I was able to cover it. If that was to happen now, that Obamacare has kicked in, I would not be able to go. I promise you, it would be way too expensive for me to ever go. Well, now we're going to see yet another increase from the worst president of all time with the worst idea of all time, known as Obamacare. Again, yeah, another reason that many of us that don't love Trump like him quite a bit, is that he wants to get rid of this nightmare. Texas' largest health insurance provider is aiming to raise rates by as much as 60% in 2017, which is another example of how the Affordable Care Act is anything but. Um, I want to mention, people love to point to Denmark and Sweden. Let me tell you what, if you want to be some great socialist, of which I'm not, I might point out that Denmark did not see a 60% increase within the first half decade of the implementation of their health care. So don't give me Denmark did it. Denmark did not do this. This is a crucifixion. In a statement yesterday, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas announced, there's a link to it as you see on screen share, that they had filed for a rate increase for as much as 59.35% from current rates due to huge revenue losses. In other words, nobody but sick and poor people are signing up for it, and it's costing everybody else so much that the entire system is going to crash like a house of cards in a tornado. That's to account for the lower than hoped for enrollment, it says, sicker than expected customers, and problems with the government's financial backstop for insurance markets, writes the Daily Morning News. The company says it has lost over a billion dollars. Now, you can say what you want about Donald Trump, and it may or not be right, but I'm pretty sure that Donald Trump's health care proposal is not going to put a company, just one company, a billion dollars in the hole. He is also not going to allow insurance rates to go up by 60%. Okay, he's not. I don't care what you think about him. It's absolutely impossible that he would allow this to happen. 
It's also important to understand the magnitude of the losses experienced in the individual retail market over the past two years, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas said, reporting $592 million lost in 2015 and 140, and, excuse me, 416 million in 2014. In other words, Obamacare has been costing a massive amount of money with virtually not one damn thing to show for it. That is why socialism, and make no mistake about it, that's what Obamacare is. That is why socialism is not the answer. Because it doesn't deliver what it promises. It does the exact opposite. It costs more than the nightmare we had before it. Now, I know you're looking at me and you think, all right, creepy guy in the hat, you're a libertarian, you don't want universal health care. It depends. This is actually one of the areas where I do deviate from the libertarian conservative movement quite a bit. I do think that health care is a human right. But I think that the free market is going to raise the most amount of money to alleviate the costs. So in that aspect, I am in fact very libertarian, just in a different and I'm sure you can see why by what I just said. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views, um, brought to you by Sticker Junkie. I've got two stories left to get to, but I want to let you know that when you get your stickers from Sticker Junkie, you see these happy people on the site? You're going to be even happier than that. He changed it, David Lake did. New site up. Um, the reason that you're going to be happier than even these people are is these people likely didn't get the discount that you're going to get. Because if you listen to The Correct Views, and you on checkout type in correct views or the correct views you're going to get even a further discount because you're a listener of the show on checkout so you're going to have amazing stickers and you're going to save a fortune just because you listen to the show guys this is freebeacon.com one of the last two stories i have to get to how many of you know that the dui laws in this country are not about safety at all the studies that you see where someone is driving a car and they're weaving all over because the car has been programmed to act like what they insinuate falsely that your average drinker would do behind the wheel of a car. And it's entirely untrue. You can prove this because there are videos on YouTube of people driving with much more than that on private property and showing you, you know, that they can handle the car amazingly and they've had three shots in an hour. But yet, if you do it, you know, they're going to give you a DUI. Why? Because it's not about safety. It's about money revenue. Because if you're, if you've had a couple shots and your, your taillight goes out, they give you a ticket for the taillight, but they shouldn't be able to check you for the DUI because you haven't done anything. Your taillight went out when you were driving, and that would have happened whether you were drinking or not. But they'll give you a DUI, and they'll say that the DUI, that the alcohol is what caused it. It's a lie. It's an excuse to get money. It's a lie. If someone's weaving and swerving, then we have laws against weaving and swerving. We don't need alcohol laws. You pull them over for the weaving and swerving, and you do whatever you need to do. The, there is no instance where the government should be allowed to force a person into what is in essence a medical program like they do when you get arrested for drinking. It's none of their business if you drink. You either obeyed the law or you didn't obey the law. Alcohol is not a factor in most instances. However, according to freebeacon.com, the feds are developing a device to continuously monitor how much Americans drink. This is why organizations like MAD have done this country far more harm than good. Elizabeth Harrington, the federal government is investing in technology to continuously monitor how much Americans are drinking if they have been arrested for driving under the influence. And they can, as we just pointed out, can give you a DUI for being absolutely sober. It happens every day. The National Science Foundation awarded $50,000 to Florida. It's always Florida. Uh, Florida International University to develop a watch-like device linked to a smartphone that police departments could use to monitor the blood alcohol content of DUI offenders. In other words, your Fourth Amendment means absolutely nothing. 
go to hell. All that matters is we get more money for more programs to bring more revenue in, to force people into treatment that they don't need for alcoholism that they don't have. Friends, that brings us to the dumb deal of the day. <laughs> Uh, you are an idiot. What is the dumb deal today? Let me turn this down. How many times do we have to report on this? CNS News. 1,037 Syrian refugees admitted in May. Two were Christians. 1,035 were Muslim. Um, one of the few instances that you'll ever see an inverted cross in a way that isn't satanic is in this next photograph. Uh, for those of you that don't know, in modern times, when you see an inverted cross, it means an inversion of Christianity. It is an insult to Christianity. However, historically, that hasn't been the case you will sometimes find ancient Christians and in very rare instances, Orthodox Christians that will have an inverted cross. The reason for that is that when Paul was crucified, excuse me, Peter was crucified, he said that he wasn't worthy to be killed the way his God, Jesus, was. So he asked to be crucified upside down out of respect for Jesus Christ. I'm going to say that because you're about to see an inverted cross here, and usually that means deicide or something evil, but that's not the case in this particular instance. We have Christians who, by great, um, by great abundance, have been the most killed people in Syria. Keep in mind, you've got Muslims killing other Muslims. And those Muslims that aren't doing the killing, they do need it to be rescued. But the point is, both kinds of Muslims, oftentimes Sunni and Shiite, attack Christians. Where do Christians get to go? Where is their safe haven? Because they've been there long before Mohammed defiled the land with his presence. So, yes, I said it. So why is Christianity? They're the, they should be throwing the Muslims out. They were there first, but no. And then you've got our dear leader, Obama, allowing 1,037 Muslims into the country and two Christians. When it's Christians that are being butchered more than Muslims. The number of Syrian refugees admitted into the United States jumped to 1,037 during May. It's an increase of 130% over the previous month. But the proportion of Christians among them remains minuscule. Two Christians, that's 0.19%. It was 0.2. It's gone down compared to 1,035 Muslims. May's figure of 1,037 refugees brings the total number since 2016 to 2,099. Earlier years since the Syrian war began have seen much smaller numbers. It doesn't really matter. The point is the same thing. This is the destruction of the West by design. Let the Christians be destroyed let the Muslims in, unvetted, call anybody that's got a problem with it a racist. Look, unvetted Muslims, not all Muslims, unvetted Muslims have turned Sweden into the rape capital of the world. And yet, the Swedes have historically been an extremely peaceful, non-violent, non-raping culture. Guess what? They still are. You can look this up. The problem is coming from warmongering Islamists. And if that offends you, it's probably because you're not a warmongering Islamist, so I'm not talking to you. 
were being overrun and Christians are being slaughtered. And it's happening by design. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Uh, you look up my Patreon site. Um, you can donate at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. You, you're listening to this. Drop me an email. I'll let you know where to help me out. All money you give to me, I put into this show right here. So please help me out. If you like the show, let me know, because I'm debating whether to keep this going or simply stay with the media speaks, and that's up to you. If you like it, let me know. But I definitely need more shares and more help. I'm like one person here trying to make this show grow, and that's not going to happen. So I need your help. Thank you, friends, for listening. Good night. God bless. Make sure you got call change transportation. They're cheaper than Uber, especially when you told them you heard about it from the correct news. Good night, friends. God bless.